Hello everyone, this is Spring Porter with Spring Solutions LLC. Congratulations to the two subscribers that I chose for the free coaching call. Their emails have gone out. Uh, in this video, I wanted to go over the state of Utah and the state of Wyoming. This is going to be similar to the other videos in which I show you the funds locator, and then I show you what their instruction and procedure manual looks like on their websites. So if you're interested in working in those states, please stay tuned. Please note that I am not an attorney. This information is not indicated as legal advice. This is strictly for researching purposes only. We come to the funds locator, and we look up the state Utah, and it's just one district in the state of Utah. We have about 15,000 uh, cases where there are unclaimed funds. So there's a large amount here. And if we go to their website, and we search unclaimed funds. We'll see the application down here. This is the unclaimed funds order that will need to be submitted with your application, like we've seen in other jurisdictions. And if we go further down, we see the application. And this looks like the official form. I guess for this particular district, because they include something called a notice of objection deadline. When you file a application for unclaimed funds, there are some jurisdictions that um, need an objection deadline so that any creditor or any party to this case can object to them receiving the money. And that could be for any number of reasons um, that the court sees fit. So uh, if someone does object to your application, and I don't see why they would because these cases are closed or dismissed, um, I have yet come across a case where someone has objected to their unclaimed funds. But in the event that you do get an objection filed, you will receive the notice in the mail, and it will tell you what you need to do. Um, and just because someone objects, to a motion, it doesn't mean that they're going to get their desired outcome. So just keep that in mind too. Just like we file a petition for anything, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be granted always, right? So the same thing is could be said about the objection. So for this particular district in Utah, they need this particular thing also mailed to um, the courts. All right, so both um, in this area, it's the US Attorney's Office is listed down here. And again, maybe this looks like the clerk's office up here. So all of the, the whole application should be submitted to the same people. And if we go further down, it just has the similar information with the claimant and um, the notary language, right? So this is the state of Utah. Um, let's see. And it's important to note that some districts um, already have that objection to deadline just sort of built in. It's just sort of known, and they don't file that actual notice. Uh, but if you actually file your application and you go to the court docket, you would see that the language, they automatically, the clerk will automatically put in there that there's 21 days. So you file the application, and the reason that it takes so long for the order to come in is because they're seeing if anyone has filed an objection. So again, the time frame from filing an application to receiving your order it varies from state to state because some have a longer range of an objection deadline and some have a shorter range, all right? And also depending on if something is missing from your application packets. So all those things can sort of uh, determine the time frame to when you and your client will get your money, all right? So that is the District of Utah. And Wyoming, Let's go back to the funds locator. Wyoming only has uh, about 2,400, right? So not as many as Utah, but still some that you can search through. So if we come to their website, to Wyoming, and we go up here to unclaimed funds, their information is um, listed right here. So if you go down this 
um, page. It shows you the instruction package, right? So you can read through this. This looks similar, just at first glance, similar to the other states that have um, that follow sort of the overall bankruptcy rules as a whole. This looks similar to those states. And then here's the application itself. Yeah, it looks like this is the official form. So they are following the official form, right? And see, in this particular state and district, you don't see that notice that's attached to this. But that doesn't mean that they still don't follow the rule. It's just less paper for you. So this is why it's important to read your instruction packet, because it will tell you in there if there's a 21 day, it'll tell you the grace period. It should. If it doesn't, you can call the clerk's office and find out about how long it will take. All right. This is the reason why I do this, because I'm showing you how different, again, all jurisdictions and states can be in terms of their policies and procedures. And we're seeing that play out on a larger scale with what's going on with the rioting and that sort of thing and what states are doing in lockdown and it just goes on and it trickles down to small, you know, courts like this as well. All right. And so if we go further down, we see the order again. And here's the tax information. Right. And then underneath that, there's a, a W-9 form. So if you go through the instruction packet, depending on what kind of claimant you are, you'll know which form you need to fill out. All right. So I hope that this is helpful to you. If you're interested in working in the state of Utah or Wyoming, this video is for you. I look forward to the coaching calls with the two subscribers that I've selected, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.